I chose one question. It's a question, well, it's a four parts, A, B, and C, which we're going to discuss with you. We're going to discuss with you why we're going to discuss with you why n tuples, the CN space, canonical CN space, is a vector space. That's the example I just introduced on the, on the previous slide. We're also going to discuss with you why if I take n tuples but with a different choice of scalars, and we don't have a canonical name for this, that's why I give you the complete n tuple. We don't have a canonical name like that for this. Why this is a vector space. And we're also going to discuss why if I take a, a quadruple like this, you see, now I take the n tuples of reals, but with the choice for this for the scalars complex, this is not a vector space. There are plenty of questions like this in the yellow book. I chose one. This, these two, these two, part B and C, in fact, these are the part of the question six in the yellow book. There will be more. And those you will do on your own. <coughs> so, like it or not, like it or not, you have to go through the axioms and tediously verify or fail, verify each of them or fail one of them. And that's what I'm going to do. So, in my notations, in my notations, I will use the notation U for this n tuple. I will use the notation V for this n tuple, and I will use a notation W for the n tuple like this. So the axiom number one, which we know it's a pseudo axiom, but it's the one which we have to check anyway, it says this, we have to make sure that if I have a sum, if I have a sum, then the sum will be the element of my set V as well. How do we know that? Well, for the case A and B, you should argue like this. Because the entries of the original n tuples are complex numbers, we know that when we add complex numbers, we end up with the complex numbers. That's the main piece which you have to say in your argument. If it's missing, you may lose some marks for that. That's the, that's the actual thing which does the job. For the part C, we say the same. We, we will say the same thing, almost identical. But this time we say about the real numbers. If my entries are real numbers, if u j and v j are real numbers, then the sum of these real numbers is a real number again, and that's the complete verification of axiom one. In all three cases, you can also specify that j here take the values from one to n. Axiom number two. Axiom number two, this is the associative law. This is the associative law. So here's my left hand side of the associative law. If I do the complete expansion for this, the way we do the addition for vectors, that will be the expression like this. It's the first component, you see? First component of U plus first component of V plus first component of W, second component, many other components, the last component, the nth component. This is the left-hand side of the associative law. This is the right-hand side of the associative law. Look at this. Again, I do the same operations on the components. On the first component, on the second component, and on the last component. How do we know? How do we know that this one equal to this one? We know it because the same, the same relation is true for numbers itself. We know it because uj plus vj plus wj equal to uj plus vj plus wj. And that is, that is true in number case. j from 1 to n. Again, you see, I'm, I'm being very detailed in my exposition here just to show you the, the main piece which must be present in your argument. I wrote this. I intentionally kept the, I kept the, uh, the brackets here. I intentionally kept the brackets here 
And the main reason why left-hand side equal to the right-hand side is because the same thing is true for numbers. Third one, commutative law. Again, I make a full expansion for the left-hand side. Look at this. I make the full expansion for the left-hand side, the way we add vectors. I make the full expansion for the, for the right-hand side, V plus U. I keep the order in my writing. Look at this. U, V, V, U. And then the main argument comes from the fact that if you add numbers, you can add them in any order. The main argument comes from the fact that UJ plus VJ is the same as VJ plus UJ. And that is true for numbers, either complex numbers or real numbers. This is true for numbers and for every j between 1 and n. That's why all three cases, so far, all three examples, they match the first one, they match the second one, they, I mean, they satisfy the first, second, and the third one. 